Hey folks, I'm here in Red Square. Um, as you can see behind me is the Kremlin. And I wanted to take this opportunity to make a video. Um, I'm actually on the end of the square. As you can see behind me is the, the big Russian Orthodox Cathedral, the Red Cathedral that they call it. Um, and I wanted to take this opportunity to make a video um, because a lot of people on the left in particular talk about Russian imperialism or, or the notion that Russia is somehow an empire. Uh, rivaling the United States. Um, and I've noticed it's interesting because a lot of people on the right wing in Russia or in the more traditional or orthodox conservative uh, wing of Russian politics, they also talk about Russian imperialism. They talk about the idea of a Russian empire or Russia uh, or Eurasian empire. So I wanted to, to talk about why I would reject the concept of Russian imperialism or the notion that Russia is an empire uh, as a as leftist or a Marxist. Okay, so we need to get clear on what our terms are, right? A lot of people will use the word uh, imperialism just as a synonym for colonialism or for a country influencing or dominating another country. That's not actually what imperialism is. If you read uh, Lenin's book, uh, Imperialism, the Highest Stage of Capitalism, he describes that, um, that imperialism is an economic system. Imperialism is a system in which uh, finance capital and the state uh, become dominance over, over industrial capital, um, and they control the economies of the world. They divide the world up into spheres of influence, which they control, and they hold back the economies of developing countries. They keep developing countries poor in order to maintain a monopoly on the international markets. Uh, you know, the British in India. They went to India, they took control, and they forced India to buy products from Britain. Uh, they beat down and kept India in a state of underdevelopment. You can look at what uh, you know the USA has done in Latin America. You can look at uh, what countries like Belgium did in the Congo. You know, all over the world, um, the Western capitalist countries have basically held back and kept countries around the world in a state of underdevelopment in order uh, in order to maintain a monopoly. Um, and and that's imperialism. It's an economic system. Well, that's not how Russia is set up. At this point, Russia's economy is centered around oil and natural gas, not somebody else's oil and natural gas, their own oil and natural gas, which they export on the international markets. And they don't do it to make profits. They do it under the control of the state sector. Uh, Gazprom, Rosneft, uh, these two gigantic corporations, they sell oil and natural gas. And uh, the oil and the natural gas uh, that's sold on the international markets, as well as sold domestically, um, it, it you know all goes into the state budget. And the economy is, cent is essentially centered around the state. I mean, they have a lot of private industry, but it's all centered around this government-controlled oil and natural gas. That's not imperialism. Uh, you know, imperialism is a relationship in which, uh, in which countries are being beaten down, in which there's captive markets being created, in which countries are deeply impoverished and kept in a state of underdevelopment. Um, and you just don't see that happening. Now, a lot of people will talk about Russia's intervention in Crimea, and they'll say, well, you know, that, uh, that's imperialism. Well, first of all, that's not the economic and the, the Marxist understanding of imperialism. And second of all, I mean, Crimea has always been considered part of Russia. Uh, the only reason it was part of Ukraine was that was back in 1956. Khrushchev signed it over to Ukraine as part of a deal. Um, and, and when the Soviet Union fell, there was a treaty that was signed, and the understanding was that Ukraine would get Crimea. However, Russia would maintain their military base. So there has been a big Russian military base in Crimea since the, the fall of the Soviet Union. And then after a virulently anti-Russian government was installed in Kiev uh, by the United States, the Euro Maiden events, the USA backed this, you know, this government, uh, this uprising to overthrow the Ukrainian government. Um, and install the elected Ukrainian government was toppled, and, and a you know a virulently uh, pro-Western and anti-Russian government was installed. After that happened, uh, the people living in Crimea, who most of which you know speak Russian and consider themselves to be Russian, and most of which are connected somehow to the Russian military base, uh, you know they did vote for independence, um, and they voted to join with Russia because they they felt threatened by this virulently anti-Russian government. And the vote was like 98 percent. I mean it was ridiculous. The people voted, and Russia had already had a military presence. They say Russia invaded. Crimea. They didn't invade. They already had the military was already there. There wasn't some big, you know, rolling in of tanks or something like that. So, you know, this this notion of Russian imperialism is just kind of a, a distortion. You know, people talk about their role in Syria. In Syria, they're trying to hold Syria together. 
and they they're they're trying to keep uh, Syria together in the face of you know Islamic extremists and terrorists that are supported by the USA and the Western countries in an effort to bring down the Syrian government. So um, you know the, the notion that Russia is imperialist it's it's kind of the opposite, um, and especially during the the Soviet period, Russia was doing the opposite of imperialism. Imperialism is about impoverishing the world in order you know to keep a monopoly. Russia was almost bankrupting itself, giving aid and assistance to countries around the world. And even today, you know, if you look at Russia's role in Eastern Europe, if you look at Russia's role in, in various countries aligned with them, they are giving aid and material assistance. They're doing everything they can to develop these countries because they can then have a bigger trading partner. Russia's part of the new Silk Road and One Belt, One Road initiative uh, in alliance with China. Um, and if you look at the role they're playing in the world, they're trying to, to maintain their state-controlled economy with the sale of oil and natural gas, and they're trying to develop trading partners and allies who will buy that oil and natural gas from them. So uh, th this notion that Russia is imperialist is just false, but it's based on a false understanding. You know, are there capitalists in Russia who make lots of money? Sure. Um, you know, does Russia have influence over the world economy? Sure, but that's not what imperialism is, and Russia is not an imperialist country.